if you want to make art and just throw it out there and just pray to God it it it, it goes somewhere, well then good luck. And that to me that's that's mediocrity. Like I refuse to let other people who bleed like me decide where my stuff goes. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us everywhere you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And y'all know when we do this intro, we got a very special guest. Man, successful rapper, poet, all around entertainer on social media. I consider Dax a straight up just winner at this point, man, because you've broken some <laughs> barriers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I got to do my little intro, man. I always say it like this, man, it's your boy Dax, and we back at it like a bad habit. If you want something in this life, you better go grab it. And today, baby, we finna make a big play. Hey. <laughs> yes, sir, it's the affirmation right there. I love that, that man. Well. Well. I, I love that, man. Hey, I think the first thing I want to start off with, and I, and I love that energy because really, you're an artist that's done things that aren't covered enough, in my opinion. And you're an inspiration or should be more of an inspiration to a lot of artists. But being successful independently, my question to you is, are you happy? And let me give you a little context of why I'm asking this. A lot of artists, right? We're not deep, deep, deep in this indie era that we're in. So most people still grew up with a vision of something that looked quite different when it became to living as an artist. You know, the labels, the, that traditional route. Um, so it's hard to accept there might be other ways and it might still not look exactly like you thought it would. And for as somebody who's successful, um, but not in the more traditional version of what it might have looked like back in 2005 or something. Are you happy? Yeah, I would, I would generally say I'm a pretty um, happy person for me. Uh, I guess the definition of happiness I've always um, subscribed to is uh, having something to look forward to. And I can definitely say I always have something to look forward to, but I also usually have things to look forward to because just like right here, I write down my goals every day. So I'm always in a car with a destination to go to. And sometimes I feel like people who are generally unhappy from what I've seen is they don't really have like a destination since life is a car. You know, we never get in a car without knowing where we're going. So, you know, writing goals is really giving me that happiness. Um, uh, I'd say, you know, since it's different than conventional, like you said, artistry, like the label and everything. I, I, I enjoy it. I've always enjoyed having, con like, I like to control my destiny. Obviously, there's God, but, you know, God granted us free will. You know, so God helps those who help themselves. So I always like to have things that I can control. And, you know, I've always felt when you build it a certain way, no one else can break it. So I'm happy in terms of that. You know, I don't got to worry about how much gas costs and I can go buy whatever cereal I want at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I'm, I would say I'm generally happy. Was there a moment in time where you feel like you had to accept that your path is just different? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I had to from the jump. Like, I, I never wanted to make music. Like, this wasn't my goal in life. I was playing basketball the whole time. Um, found the law of attraction when I was 11 and committed to basketball. And I tried to mimic the whole Kobe Bryant work ethic. So I, that was a 10-year uh, just, you know, 5 a.m. high school, my practice, older person's practice, weights, dug, as every just all of that for 10 years. Went to three different colleges in four years, Division One basketball, I was trying to go pro. And then I just randomly stumbled onto poetry my junior year of college after D1 didn't work out. So I was like, ah, this, is, this wasn't really the plan. But poetry and words came so easy that um, I was just like, I think this is what God has planned for me. So I just, it just, like it wasn't my goal, you know? So yeah, I forgot the original question. Actually, what was the, what was the question you're talking when I asked about accepting? Yeah. So I've, I've, I've completely accepted. I think like the way I do things maybe might not be normal. You know, I think when I was, when I was trying to, when I started writing poetry, I didn't even want to make music. I was just like, okay, well I want to be the Drake of spoken word poetry mm -hmm. because my life and the way I grew up didn't really resonate with what I was seeing in mainstream hip hop. You know, I didn't, I came from Canada, you know, to say the least. Yeah. Um, so I was like, ah, I don't think there's really a space for me in this hip hop thing from what I was seeing. Cause I didn't, I didn't watch music growing up. I was just like, there was a background music to basketball when I was working out. Mm -hmm. So then when I finally figured out how to merge like my poetry, spoken word, motivational speaking into actual music, I was like, okay, I think there, I can't accept this because I can do it the way I want to without compromising my morals and beliefs and stuff. That's dope, man. Because you, 
you've definitely kept a consistent path where like you haven't tried to put on any type of image it feels like right without knowing you 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 definitely didn't try to put on an image that was conventional or feel like you were trying to fit in and like i knew you first as a poet like i did like i was familiar with like the poet guy that's how i kind of thought of you not even like in a bad way but it's just like there there's not a lot of people today that are like have viral poetry you get what i'm saying (laughs) so i was just like oh man this dude's like actually blowing up in that realm i think there's one other guy i can't remember his name at the moment that was probably like in the first half of last decade that was um had some decent viral poetry stuff but um prince ea maybe yes yeah prince ea yep prince ea and and then i remember you um like Tory Lanez had this whole, like he was battling people and then you got on it. And in my opinion, like you went crazy. I'll say that to say the least, right? And then it it, it got interesting around around that time. I remember there was like some, uh, like Tory had come up to you or whatever. But like, I only mentioned that because I thought that was like your first like real moment into things. Like I knew you were poetry and then like from rap, that felt, for me and what I experienced you as was like, oh snap, like this dude's really in it. He can rap for real. And then I, <laughs> then I found out that you had the um, the Dan. What's it, what's the uh, the remix? Oh, Daniel yeah, Rose, catch me outside. Catch, catch me outside. outside. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, Dax? That was Dax. I had no idea that, that been, was you. Um, obviously, I'm I'm pr- praying for him. You know, I, that's an unfortunate situation. Um, but yeah, before that, I had a couple viral moments. I think that was just a moment in time where I guess a lot of, you know, maybe mainstream um, hip hop, um, uh, what do you call them? Media probably covered and said my name, but before then I had a, you know, a bunch of different viral moments, whether it was for like poetry, hip hop, uh, just, just like in my realm of stuff, you know what I mean? It's never really been my goal to step into like the mainstream side of it like that. So I, I understand what you're saying though. Yeah. So, what did it, did you feel like you had to completely rebrand when you did figure out the rap stuff or was it just something that happened organically since it was still just words? Um, No, not necessarily. I think I've always just sort of been like, okay, well, what, what is it, what it is, what, what do I do? You know, I'm, I'm good with words. I'm a motivational speaker, which I did that as well. I do poetry. So that's why a lot of my initial songs that went really big were just, you know, rapping from beginning to end, you know, like my first song, she cheated again. There's no hook. The then even the Danny Bergoli, there was no hook. Um, Dear God, there was no hook. There was a bunch of my songs had no hooks. It was just me rapping from start to finish. And then the content of the songs was basically just what was what in line with, you know, I had experienced through my whole life, you know, like the she cheated again song that blew up. That was an actual, you know, thing I went through. You know, so I wouldn't necessarily say I had to rebrand. I would say maybe a better word is a refocus, but I wouldn't uh, say I've ever stepped up. I, I, like the rapping stuff was really just a sharpening of skill. Like when I was like rapping on Tupac beats and, you know, Eminem beats and doing all those remixes, I just told myself, okay, well, how did I get better at basketball? I needed to do progressive overload or when I'm lifting weights, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, this is easy. How can I make and practice this skill harder? So I just figured, okay, well, if I'm going to rap, who are the greatest rappers of all time? What are their beats? Let me do it publicly because failing publicly makes you have to improve faster. So I was trying to rap on some of the greatest beats by some of the greatest artists to where my pen had to just like get better, you know? So like I was rapping on the Tupac beats. I'd only been rapping for like six months. (laughs) So I was just like doing these, like to me there was, I was doing drills, you know what I mean? So yeah, but I wouldn't, not a, not a rebrand. It was, it was just a, a refocus tapping into God's plan for me. That's really interesting because like today there's a lot of complaint that labels don't develop their artists enough. Right. But when you want to have less responsibility from a label side, it's harder for you to take that on. And, but that puts more responsibility on the artist to develop themselves. And, you know, there's less of a blueprint out there for that, but it sounds like you just took the idea of self-improvement that you learned through sports and of course following somebody like Kobe and was able to just translate that into your own self-development boot camp. Right. That's that's exactly what I tell people. Sometimes people are like, oh man, how do you like 
you know, because I do all, like all my social media stuff and stuff like that. And just the whole thought process, like I call it like going door to door. Like when I first started, I was like, OK, well, I have a service. I'm providing motivation and hope to people. Hope is like the greatest gift you can give. So if I'm doing something that's positive, how can I get it to the people? So when I played basketball, I'm, I made the provincial team. We won a national championship. It was crazy. Um, but I needed money to go to practice in Toronto. And my mom didn't drive long distances or like to drive on the highway. So I had to take a Greyhound. So I was like, okay, well, how am I going to make this money? So I would literally go door to door and I would just ask people for $1, you know, and I made a shit ton of money because everyone, I figured everyone has $1. In Canada, we have loonies and toonies, but most people reach into their pocket. They got more than $1. So mm-hmm. they end up, when you're asking for $1, like, oh, that's nothing. Let me give this little kid uh, dollars. And they end up giving me two, three, four. So I do that the whole summer. I'm starting to make like thousands. So I had to stop because I felt bad. I'm like, ah, I'm making like this. I just need my ticket for Greyhound and I'm good. You know, so when I made my music, I'm like, okay, well, I'm providing a service that's positive. That's not leading people to the depths of hell. So how can I spread this? Okay, door to door. So, you know, I put a number on my wall. I said, if I individually talk to a million people by myself and tell them about this service that is providing them, like it's providing them a service and doing something positive, there's no way I can fail. So that was just the mentality of like basketball as well. You know, rep after rep, shot after shot, a thousand shots a day. You know, just that mentality. So I always tell people, like, this is so much easier than basketball because it's not physically taxing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just tedious. Right. <laughs> you know, hours of back in the day sending emails and DMing hundreds and thousands of people. And, you know, so, yeah. What drove you to go door to door, though? Like, I know that you wanted to play basketball, but... Like, yeah, yeah. I, that's a I, different I, thinking. I, I just had this burning desire in me since I was just like a a kid, and one of my biggest fuels usually is like anger. You know, I that's why I love disrespect. I love when people disrespect me. You know, like I love that shit. It just like it's just a fuel to just like oh, you know. And the thing about basketball is like when you play sports, it's like you understand hierarchy. You know, yeah. you understand that okay, I'm not. I'm, I I wasn't the best player on every team I played on. You know, sometimes I was. When I was younger, on the when I was playing up, I was the worst player on the team. You know, there's then my high school, I was the best player. So you understand there's different skills. And okay, I'm only six two. I'm not six six. I don't have a forty inch vertical. These different things. So there's only like a certain there's a ceiling, and I could just be the best I can be. But with me, with music, I feel like what I'm capable of in my brain. I feel like uh, I feel like I was. I feel like I'm a LeBron in terms of like what I was gifted with naturally in terms of like brain and writing and stuff like that. So. You know, it's just, it's fun. It's just, all I have to do is figure out ways to get it to the people. And, you know, generally you make stuff that's relatable. People are going to share it, you know, and then you just scale it, you know. What's crazy is that when you talked about going door to door, asking for money, and then people give, you know, ask for a dollar and people give you more, you know, I think back and, you know, times with somebody that's homeless walks up to me in the car They'll ask for a dollar. Sometimes I might give them 20, give them five, whatever. And that directly translate into this pay what you owe. Or what's the what's the name it call, uh, called? Yeah, pay what you pay what you want. Or, pay what you want or whatever. Yeah. Or proud to pay. There we go. Style of mm. of um, you know, music sales. Music sales that people are doing today. I I guess, right. you know, it's an element that's always always been there, right? You you ask for something specific, but if people support right. you. There's like a rule. It's like a it's like a thing in life. I remember I was told it was like, if you're willing to ask, I forget what the number was. If you're willing to ask a thousand people, any you can get anything you want in the world. But most people stop after three strikes. You get told three. They get told no three times and they're done. You know. But if you're willing to ask any question, I'm talking some sick minded shit. You know. You ask. You ask. You willing to ask a thousand people? You're gonna get a yes eventually. Yeah. You know. So. That's just always been my mentality, man. Sometimes, like, back in those days, I remember when I first started, you know, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, like, go door-to-door social media-wise or message everyone you knew growing up to share this or share that. So I'd be sitting in my dorm room with, like, a bottle of tequila or, I mean, vodka back then, just, like, sipping it periodically while I'm just messaging everybody, hey, could you share this poem? I'm I'm making poems about love and shit, you know what I mean? I'm like, hey, could you share this? And just going through all the list every single time, every single poem. And then it paid off, but you know, I see why a lot of people don't want to do it and why the label system seems the way because you, you know, you have this machine that's doing all these things for you. 
But I want to drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem and not just any old fan problem, but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral, have a lot of success, get a lot of streams, but still not being able to know who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fan simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code no labels zero two. All right. Now, look, the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code no labels zero two to get initial access for only one dollar. Let's get back to this episode. You don't want to handle your own rejection up front. It's better if it comes through somebody else who manages most of the rejection. Right. Right. Do you have any mental tricks other than vodka for that? <laughs> um, I mean, so yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just like you just sometimes I just gotta slap I slap myself and just be like, man, I you know what I say a hundred times a day. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. I feel it. Thanks. Or I'll say, man, I'll, I, I, hate, I, hate, I hate cussing a lot now, but I'll, like, I'll think of something. And oftentimes what deters a lot of us is like the thought of what other people are going to think. Mm -hmm. You know, so my phrase is, fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> Send. You know, just like, just fuck that motherfucker. Post. Like, just, I'm saying my little, my first poem was literally about, um, about, not letting people who do nothing for me take everything from me. I sat, I was on break as a janitor and I was about to, you know, I'd been, I played basketball my whole life and all of a sudden I'm writing poetry and I'm like, man, this is for shit's for sissies. You know what I mean? What am I writing poetry for? And I'm like, man, fuck it. These, I'm, who, why do I care what these people think? What do they do for me? Absolutely nothing. So that was like, I had to keep tricking myself out of, you know, judgment of other people. I still do it to this day. Man, I, I resonate with that so much. I had to tell myself the same thing a few days ago, quite a few times in that same day. That's I, I use that strategy as well. As somebody who developed yourself as an artist, right? Developed yourself as a basketball player. Um, that's not a that type of ambition and method doesn't leave a person. You usually don't do that just once. Once you unlock that key to life that you can do that so what are you focused on developing now when it comes to yourself uh like music wise or like as a man let's go with as a man um as a man is i think i think saying saying no saying no is a skill you know like trying not to you know run myself thin um also have discernment with that you know it's crazy i think like the the everything is so easy in life except for like choosing a partner you know i think it's like really having discernment with women not uh you know i literally have this song eventually that's going to come out it's called jezebel and one, one of the lines is like um every, everything that glitters ain't gold everything pretty ain't meant to be touched you know so just practicing discernment, man, you know, turning off the god dang, uh, you know, that, that that sexual switch. You know what I mean? Just because that thing shakes doesn't mean you got it. You know what I mean? Essentially. So that um, uh, being a man of my word, just making sure it's like not necessarily following through with what I say, but not saying things that I'm not going to do. So not like it's like, you know, so it's like only say things that I'm going to complete on all aspects. Right. Um, there's that. Um being present and trying to get better at that in conversations. Uh, 
what else? Uh, I'm trying to get better at um, praying. I don't pray enough. Started going to church more. Yeah, it's that. And then you know it's crazy too as well. One thing I'm really focusing on is only speaking on things I know. I'm pretty I'm pretty good at that, but just like making sure it's like okay, if I don't if I don't know, don't don't say anything. You feel pressure to speak on stuff because of your platform? No, nah, it's you know it's crazy. I don't even speak on stuff with my platform. I'm just talking about in like real, like real life, like with people who are who I know and people who I take care of and stuff like that. You know, it's like if I don't know, find the answer. And if I don't have the answer, don't answer it. Just say, I don't know. I feel it. I feel it. Because a lot of people expect me to have answers. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't fucking know. Like, I'll find out. But We can figure it out together. I yeah. got you. Well, let's talk about moving into country. All right. Okay. There's a lot that comes with that, right? Right now, we literally have this conversation of Beyonce doing the country music. And, uh, you know, the conversation gets becomes racial very quickly right you found a way into country and it hasn't even really been covered right what you were doing right that kind of, it kind of goes like you just slip below you know the door over and That's over how they and always over. gonna do me <laughs> how did was that like an intentional i'm gonna get into country or did you just get moved and you felt a song and you're like this is kind of a country type song so i guess i just got to put it out like what was the thought process there Ah uh, shit! You know it's crazy. It's really just it's 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 a it's a, it's a way of life. It's the life I've lived. You know, a lot of people don't know I've I've lived in Montana. I've lived in Wyoming. I've lived in Kansas. My dad, when I was growing up, he worked in Mississippi, so I was in Mississippi. Um, I was born in St. John's, Newfoundland, which is like a rock. So I'm used to like small town places. Um, my first artist name was actually almost Cowboy. Growing up, whenever I would like like mess around with my friends, I'd always sing in that tone of voice. Like my monotone voice singing is like that. You know, so it's like people see, oh, he dropped the country song. Where in my mind, it's like, okay, that was just like what I've, that's some of the parts I've lived in my life. I've lived in all these different places. And then not only that, it's like, I think the reason it sort of happens smoothly is because like my music primarily focuses on the words. So it's like, regardless of, it's like no one cares who sings to be a man. It's the message that people care about. You could, I could take a dude off the street who has a decent voice and give him that and he could read it as a poem and it's still going to go viral. Yes. Because it's talking, it encapsulates manhood. So my goal when I'm writing songs, I feel like the best songs, like Dear Alcohol, it's like no one cares who sings that. No one cares who sings Dear God. Anybody could, I could give that those words to anybody. So it's what's being said. So I think country has been accepting of what I'm doing so far because the message is bigger than me. Like to be a man is a song. It's it's bigger than me. It's not even about me. It's like, oh, this is about the like I'm just I'm I'm just a lucky person who got the words and the vessel to say it. I see what you're saying. So yeah. I think that's why they've been accepting because and country music is about words. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. songwriting. So, you know, then obviously, you know, there's there's certain things where like, you know, there's but mind you, you know, like I had the number one selling single in Canada last year with Dear Alcohol. You know, but it's not on the radio. So there's other things where I still haven't broken the barrier in. But in terms of like, you know, the Opry's and all these things like that, I think it's been a good progression. But um, it wasn't planned. It was just like I was at that time, I was sort of struggling with drinking. I didn't know the last time I had drank two days in a row. Not, yeah, not two days in a row. And um, I already had a poem called Dear Alcohol that was like seven paragraphs long that I wrote six years ago. And then after that time, I woke up after asking myself when was the last time I didn't drink for two days in a row and Lex played that beat and boom that came out and so right so then I like me dropping the song was me telling myself okay I'm, I'm gonna go sober which I did for six months when I dropped it so it was like it's just like it's it there's no plan it's like it's the life I'm living at the time it's so interesting man because I think sometimes from the fan perspective right they may see it as hey this this artist is trying to to, to cap on the trend right or maybe maybe get ahead of some type of curve they see coming. Mm. And I do think that uh, pretty much what you said is accurate, right? Sometimes it's not the artist trying to capitalize on anything. It's, hey, here's an element of my life that I haven't yet shared with you and the timing of right. when I choose to share it with you just so happens to line up with this moment that's going on. Is that something that you ever worry about taking away from the, the, the message of some of your music? Like, do you ever worry about the timing of some of these things. And even though, it, like, you know, like Sean asked, like it wasn't your intention necessarily to try to crack into country as this, as this building right. into this new trend, but it hit at the same time. 
Right, my stuff, the deer alcohol was sort of a little bit before that. That was almost, I feel like it was almost like three years ago now. Almost, I think I was sort of like, like I said, no one really speaks about what Dax does on yeah. that side of music, even you know, even so. It's like, I think it was a little bit before, but I, I necessarily, I've always told myself that, like, like if I go back to how, like, you know, like with, with basketball, I wasn't 6'4 with a 40 inch vertical, mm-hmm. you know, but I think music writing wise and what i can do musically i am that six eight 40 inch vertical person who can write something really good that's bigger than me so i think i I try not to even worry about that type of stuff i think once people hear the song and hear what i'm saying you know they're okay with it regardless of what time it dropped or obviously you know there's there's exceptions like you know if you I don't want to give an example that's controversial, but if something crazy happens and all of a sudden, you, you know what I mean? There's exceptions for that. But for the most part, like when, you know, I'm just writing songs about life. Mm. So, and they're not like, you know, I'm not dissing anybody or doing anything like that. So it's like, what can you really be mad at? It sounds like, like that's a big key to why you're able to be so multi genre, multi style, in your music because that's something that so many people ask us about right so so many artists say yo should i just do one genre or 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 can i do all the genres and then a lot of the common answer ends up being well if you could blow up within one genre or you just it's easier and then spread your you know your wings a little bit now that you have more of an audience if you have the talent to right because a lot of people think i can create great music in a lot of different genres but a lot of people necessarily have the talent to but what would you say, like, what one, do you think that is the key for you, just the songwriting while you're able to create in such a vast amount of types of music, or is it something else? Yeah, I think it's the, it's the songwriting. You know, someone like, you know, when I when I grew up, like, I was, I was an average music listener. You know, I didn't know anything. I just listened to what was on the radio. So as someone, I didn't know some people didn't write their songs. I didn't know. You know, as someone just grew up listening to music. So I like, now I'm like, you know, I write, I don't even, I wouldn't even let a motherfucker breathe on my shit. So it's like, I think the power is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the people who write the songs. The songwriters are so important. You know, as someone who writes all my own songs, it's like, well, I don't care what your voice is. If you have nothing to sing, you know? So I think when you're focused on the songwriting and the words, um, the world is yours. The oyster is yours. You know, I just, whether I'm singing it or I give it to someone else to sing. You know, you're making money either way and you're making an impact either way. Yeah. So yeah. I think for me, it's just words, words, like words shape our reality. What we say in our brain every day that manifests into our actual life. We read words, we hear words, people speak. Everything is just like language, whether it's sign language or actual words out of our mouth that we're reading. So it's like words shape everything. So when your focus is primarily the words, everything else is just a plus. Not to mention you throw in you know, the, what you can do with people's voices nowadays and studios and stuff like that. I mean, you know, like, so you have multiple genres, um, but you also just have so many talents in general in terms of like the, the way your videos are shot and everything. Like, are you like full on director, you would say, or do you just find really good talent, you know, video people to collaborate with? Um, I've directed some of my videos. I used to direct more. A lot of them in the beginning were just one takes because I, I just didn't have money to pay for full videos. So I literally used to tell my guy, you'll just show up and literally just press record. You don't even have to edit it. Just I'm going to do a one take and just send it to me. Um, now, a lot of the times I've been working with the same people since the beginning. His name's Logan Mice. It's my guy. It's a legend. Um, so he directs a lot of the videos. I'll sometimes have like an initial idea like for depression. I was like, oh, man, I'm sort of thinking like, you know, Truman, Truman show theme. And then he'll just like put that all together in his world he's like a master of his shit you know stuff that i can't see so sometimes i'll have like a general idea of what i'm thinking and he'll just hook it up i think yeah just you know working with consistently working with the same people you just learn each other um and you grow together and you know it's, it's also it's that healthy competition you know i'm i remember when when uh logan first came out uh sorry when i i think i was when i graduated and i saw like he had he had moved because we started working in kansas and, you know, I sort of see like people he's working with. So it's like, oh, you want to go harder, go harder, go harder. So you can continue to up your videos and get to the point. You know what I mean? So it's like that also like that sports good competition. So yeah, I work with a guy named Logan Mice, Acer as well. They own this company called Juni V. And then like every now and then I'll work with other people. I've also worked with a guy called Damien Sandoval. 
done a bunch of amazing videos with him same way give him maybe a general of what i'm thinking and he'll create it into a masterpiece i've done a couple of videos with this girl named eden who has a masterful mind as well um so yeah really just trying to find other people who are masters on that side you know but not only just masters people who are like willing to work hard and grow and improve the same way i am right so i feel like i've just been lucky enough to run into people and then i'm like a you know go to the wheels fall off type guy so it's like i think when oftentimes like i've always been an energy giver so once people get around me they feel that like i'm just like going so they're going to start to go harder and now i'm starting to go harder because then so you know what i mean and all of a sudden you got you know i'm a pro at this and they're a pro at that and then we just all it just continues to get better like if you look at the videos between me and logan from the beginning till now they're just getting better you know yeah man you have such a variety of content from a standpoint of like low quality and high quality and a lot of people kind of have reservations about one or the other right like maybe i don't have the money right. to do high quality but especially i have a big brand and i don't want to do this low quality or i want to feel more artistic do you did you did you ever have to face any of that or are you just like i'm just gonna put out whatever and post as much as i can and keep moving um I guess what I would, whatever I was seeing at the time was high quality to me, <laughs> you know, it was just like, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, like, you know, I didn't know videos could be this ex that expensive or you could do this or now the set could be 50 people on set and do like, I didn't know that back then. I just like, okay, I'm doing a one take. It's I'm in the desert or I'm like on the road and we're just like me and you filming. I like the way it looks on camera. But now as I'm like learning more, I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So this is what they do in actual movies. Okay. Jeez. Okay. Oh, damn. It's a lot of money. Okay. All right. So I'm going broke this year, <laughs> you know, like, so yeah, I think just, just, it just, whatever I was doing at the time, I thought it was the best. Mm -hmm. And then I learned, okay. Oh, there's more. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do that too. Okay. There's more. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, and now it's like, you get to this point where like, all right, well, I'm not there yet. But I'm trying to get there to film it like that. But you know, much the money thing really. It sounds like that's a like that's an important. It's an important like lesson in just executing and then not taking in too much information. Because if you have too much information, sometimes you will allow yourself to be paralyzed by right. that gap. But if you don't know there's a gap and you're just you know taking it in and executing you're yeah you're just going of course and you improve over time because you're never going to be you're not going to be the same person you know a year from now that you are today anyway so you might as well like document who you currently are you know what i mean and i guess that's what social media is good for because you sort of have that you know documentation like oh this is how it used to be i remember for a long time i didn't want to delete i didn't delete but i like you know archive posts on instagram like now I do it sometimes when I'm dropping a new song, but I always felt like that Instagram, they could scroll to the bottom and see how it started, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's just, I just like the idea of failing publicly. I think that's important. You know, some people will try to like, they never want to fail in public. You know, when you fail in public, you improve twice as fast, you know, so just showing people that process, showing people that, yeah, I am, you know, contacting people, trying to spread it, trying to share it, you know, so they see that process, so they resonate with you more, you know? Man, it seems like you are, everything I hear is just like driven to become better. Like in one way or another, it comes back to like this, this thirst to improve. Like, yeah. what, what is that? I think just like to make an impact, you know, it's like, I think, um, I've all, I always tell people, it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just, I guess for like people always say, well, what's your goal in music now? What's your goal? And I'm like, ah, I just, I guess to impact more people. But at this point, I'm just like, just give me what I worked for. Give me what I deserve. You know, like that's like, I guess one of my main goals. And I think that's a great, just like staple as a man. Just like, you know, I feel like just, you just, you just want what you worked for. That's what I want. So what did you work for? What do you deserve? What do I des uh, deserve is a tough word. I know uh, does, what I work for. I feel like, for example, like just let's say one example, like to say like, you know, in Canada, you have the number one selling single in Canada. You know what I mean? Dear alcohol. All right. Well then put it on the radio, you know, like to me, that's, that's what I, that's what the song deserves. You know, 
It's saving people's lives, dear alcohol. People are going sober, stuff like that. More people need to hear it. So I think that's that's, that's like what I'm, I, and there's a lot of people with the way I'm growing and the way I've done my stuff is I think it's sort of turning, you know, heads in the way people view the industry. Because like I said, I'm coming from an aspect of like, I never wanted, this wasn't my goal. I didn't think I was going to be making music, nor I was just an average music listener. So I'm like, huh, okay, well, look at all this stuff. Oh, okay, it's, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. You know what, I, you, you, see what I'm, you, you see what I'm sort of saying without saying it? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just interesting. It's interesting. That makes a lot of sense. It's like just, just the standard of, if when this happens, usually that's the outcome. Then when I do it, I expect the same or similar outcome. Right. right. But it's, hap it's, ha it's happening slowly, which I'm, I'm cool with, you know. I don't know, man. It seems like you might need a little bit of that, that little, that little friction just to keep driving you, man. That's the, yeah. That's to me, I love that. I love that type of shit, man. I love, I love negativity in terms of like stuff to motivate me, not like actual negativity, negativity. But just like you know, negativity, disrespect, anger, those types of things. I think they're great for motivation. You know. Yeah, no, nah, I could definitely get see that, especially from a sports background. I mean, that's right. that's just one of the main motivators, man. I know exactly what you mean. What about marketing, man? Like to me, I think you're a genius marketer from the outside. Oh yeah. Right, uh, but you know, there's some people that might say, "No, I'm not marketing at all. I'm just." You know, doing things that happen to work because I'm so authentic. I'm an artist and da da da. Mm. You know, like, what? How do you? Yeah, motherfuckers who say that have a label pushing it for them. You know what I mean? Like, if if I've always told people, it's like if if, if you if if you want to make art and just throw it out there and just pray to God it 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 goes somewhere, well then good luck. And that to me that's that's mediocrity. Like I refuse to let other people who bleed like me decide where my stuff goes. Like I'm going to do everything in my power because it's having a positive impact. Now, if I was saying some, I think there's a direct correlation. I think subconsciously the human body knows whether or not you're doing something good for people or bad for people. And it's almost hard to shout at the mountains, share if it's some shit that's that you subconsciously, not say verbally, but subconsciously the fibers and the cells in your body no, it's not good. Whereas like as someone like I, I always I tell people it's like people work as hard as they believe. If you if you knew you had the cure for cancer, like you were just like, I I know I I I have the cure for cancer and I know it heals people, like you're going to the mountains and you're screaming the shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I feel or based off of you know people who message me, oh, this has helped me, this song, blah, 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 blah. Like I feel it's my responsibility to do whatever I can, spend 93% of my income making the visuals and try to market it in ways that it's going to get to the people, you know? Whereas if I was just saying some bullshit, I probably would be screaming, you know, marketing it the same way. You know, hey. but it's like, I think, um, yeah, people just have to, you know, I think there's a big trend I see online as well. Like, oh, I didn't sign up to try to have to trick the algorithm, you know? Well, it's like, well, also, this is the only age and time where you could actually put out music yourself. So why are you like, what are you complaining for? You know, back in the day, it's like you, you, you would have never even had the chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I think the opportunity that you can wake up every single day and post something and it could go viral potentially. And you can then create a living for yourself and help your family is crazy to me. You know, like. And now you see Instagram like trying to compete with TikTok, so they've made the reels expandable too. So shit's just going viral left and right. You never know what it's going to be, just pieces of content. I'm like, wow, what a, what a time to live in. No, man, I agree. I feel like that lack of context is probably why the entitlement perspective comes, but it's like exactly what you said. Like, this wasn't possible back then. And when you had less responsibility, you also had less benefit right you got less of the money that's the error you're complaining about you had this is what comes with <laughs> being out the house right you live in your, you, you live on your own now you know what i mean like well you got to pay your own bills and that's just a part of it so you know i i love that you said everything you said especially because i like out of college i lived like 
it, I did a lot of startup work. All right. And I ended up working with the sales company. And so I got really deep into just sales for a period of time. And one of the core things was the more you believe in the product, all right, the easier it is to sell. But if you feel like you're lying, like exactly what you said, like that was one of the core things. And I could feel that like, <laughs> like my, myself. Yeah. Right. So like the company literally had to switch the product, change things um, at one point, And then all of a sudden the company took off. It's now like a billion dollar oh, wow. company, et cetera. So like, it's real. It, it's so real. And then some people, you know, they're just demented and they could sell anything regardless of the belief. Could sell you a bag of shit. Have you believe in <laughs> it's gonna, gonna, you know, Whiten your teeth. <laughs> Not real shit. Yeah, well, maybe yeah, that's wild, but that's that's true, man. I remember when I was in high school, I um, going to my twelfth grade year, I dropped out of all all science, all math, and I just took classes that I was just interested in because I knew I could pass like the ACT and SAT to get into college for basketball. So I just I dropped out of everything I didn't fuck with. Cause I was like, why the hell am I learning algebra at this point? It's not it's not applicable in any type of way. Where anybody want to go? So I took like a marketing class. I took a marketing class a business class and just all this stuff that i feel like i'm using now just like how you said like you like you know if you don't like if you don't have a product you don't believe in like you subconsciously your body won't even allow you to like promote it but if you if you have you have the cure for cancer you're you're shouting that shit out loud you know for everybody so i think sometimes like some i've been saying this this year as well we have to start asking different questions right so it's not why do you have to trick an algorithm why don't you have a product that makes you want to trick the algorithm? It's a great way to look at it. You know, like the question is like, why should, why, oh, why didn't you fight hard enough to see your child? This, the other question is, why did I have to fight to see my child? Mm. Like sometimes we're asking the wrong questions. Very true, very true. That <laughs> I, it's so funny, man. How we uh, like align on some of this stuff because I I used to say this in a lot of the videos on a YouTube page early on, um, and it came from like people would ask me to consult on some things, and I realized <sighs> they came in unprepared, and, and there was a lot of bad questions. So I started to make a point to say the quality of the answers you receive are predicated on the quality of the questions you ask, right? And like that right there Ooh. is just like, I it, like that. it's everything that you said, man. You know what I mean? Cause question asking is a lost art. It, it's yeah, Fast. it's hard than people think it is. That's <laughs> what scientists hard. do. Hard. Even sometimes like, <laughs> I remember even just like, even in art, like I had to learn that as well. Like even just like, you know, in arguments with a significant other, like, so, like the question, I literally have done this sometimes, like arguing with a significant other. It's like, okay, I'm just going to go into this conversation and I'm just going to, I'm not even going to make statements. Let me just ask questions. And that shit will go 10 times better. <laughs> just asking the right questions to, it's like, yeah, it's a skill, man. Asking questions, saying no, like a lot of different like skills that we don't think about that could really change your life. Hmm. I like that. The, que the answer to your, the answer to your, the and the quality of the answer is based off predicated off the quality of the question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's a what's a skill you think has contributed to your success in in music that you don't think most people would would see being something you needed to develop or, or, or do? Um, I love I love psychology. Um, I like psychology a lot. I think like. So obviously, you know, you, you can't worry about, okay, you know, th there's, it's two sides of the coin. Like, okay, well, I don't want other people's judgment of me to box me in and make me scared to do things. But then we also have to understand that we do live in a world where people's, you know, judgment, people do judge my music and are they going to come to the show or not. So what people think does somewhat matter. So trying to understand human psychology, you know, I think can help people in business. Like oftentimes it's like, obviously I like my own songs, but then once they're completely done, I'll even think about things like, okay, well, what pronouns am I using in this song? Do I want this to be an affirmation for the listener to where they're saying it and they're saying the eyes and the things so they can feel like it? Or do I want to put this in third person where they might somewhat feel attached or am I storytelling? 
you know? So I think like just little things like those, um, the psychology, the way people think, the way people receive things. I thought about the psychology in the lot in a lot of my song to be a man. Obviously it just naturally came out of me, but once it was done, I have to step back and okay. I said, okay, well, a lot of the conversation between men and women is divisive right now. You know, a lot of it brings about negativity when you try to talk about the, you know, dichotomy between like just relationships and nuclear families. Okay, well, I know men are going to fuck with the song because I'm saying facts, but are women going to like it? And I said, okay, well, how do you, you know, how do you genuinely, you know, get something across to women? It's an emotional appeal. You feel me? So the song is like, is an emotional appeal to women as well. So they fuck with it. So just thinking about the psychology of that, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think psychology and uh, what else? What's another skill? Uh shit just thinking i guess being smart shit you know you got to learn stuff to to talk about shit you know that's, that's true <laughs> so stay, you know reading consuming content that's has you consistently learning uh living life to where you have more things to talk about especially if you write all your own stuff um yeah prayer shit to be a man you know, being such an emotional appeal, being so like timely in terms of so much of the conversation that's going on today, or even the lack thereof, right? Of understanding that right. and needing the conversation. Uh, was that a song? Like, I'm, I'm sure that's one of those songs where people had to like hit you up or drop comments like, oh, yeah. yo, man, you changed my life. But I, I'm curious to hear the women, right? Cause you just spoke about women. Did you achieve that goal where you saw women say, hey, you just changed how I saw my husband or my relationships or the men in my life in general? Oh, yeah, there's been a there's been a, a lot of that. Um, I honestly think that, like, you know, obviously, like, I, I, I really I do truly believe that song is, is is a bridge to that conversation. I mean, I tell people all the time, it's like, OK, well, I was like, really, who you choose as a significant other is the most important decision in life. Like, we're all only here because a man and a woman made a decision to have a baby or didn't make a decision. That baby still came out. So that is the most important thing because human, we can only have this talk interview because someone had us as a baby. Yeah. So the relationship between a man and a woman is the most important thing on earth, which is why it's the hardest decision we make as humans who we're going to spend our life with. You know, so I knew that just like creating that emotional appeal was what was needed just subconsciously. And then just a lot of women have been I'm, I'm commenting, reaching out, you know, I see all the comments. Oh, it's making me change the way I see my husband. Because the thing is that it's, it's, it's not even just about husband. Every single, they either have sons or a father or cousins or other men that may just not be a significant other. So even if there is a little bit of negativity in the significant other relationship, they still see it in other aspects like their son, brothers, and blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of the support of the song has been women as well, which has been good to uh, which has been good to see. It's one of those things that's very much so needed whenever there's any light on that conversation because we we speak so much about the emotions. We're we're heavily educated on society on how women feel. But because right. men aren't, edu we aren't trained to express. I don't think most women realize they don't actually don't know how men feel. <laughs> this is exactly that's the a hundred percent correct. I think I I've, I've said before where it's like as a man we have to somewhat understand women to get one. Like that's just like we have to learn game. We have to learn a little bit to get one. Whereas women don't need to understand men to get a to get a man. They could just stand there and we're gonna approach them, you know. But then I do say. A woman only needs to understand a man when she gets the one she wants. Agreed. Once you get the one you want, you need to understand that motherfucker. Because if you don't, it's not going to work out. Yeah. So I think the conversation gets divided because when we speak about it, most women go like, well, eh, like, you know, screw most men. Like, but it's like, it's not about all men. It's about the one you actually, when you actually find the one you like, mm. you know? So yeah, I think, I think the song is bringing about that understanding. You know, to us, to us men too, man, it's needed. A lot of dudes suffering. How do I know? Because I went through the shit. You know, like people be thinking, like, oh, where did you? I was like, because shit, I was. That's, I was going through some shit. You know what I mean? Where I like, that's how I was able to write it. 
you know what made you put a hundred people on that song man shit i gotta put this up on my, my phone's a hundred people on the song yeah i don't know oh so i just like those open verse challenges when i have a song like that that i think is like you know timeless where you know people are going to be able to relate to it now in a hundred years, two hundred years from now, I think it's cool for other people to share their stories, mm-hmm. so people can see every there's there's different men, all different walks of life who have different stories, but we can all come together and agree on this one topic. You know, such a simple way to see it. It's not even like oh, I need to extend it with a remix to get more promo. But yeah, that's the that's the way I thought about it, pretty much. I like doing the open verse things. I like I, was, I like I also like showing people that listen. There's talented people all over the world. Don't think just because these are the people that the mainstream media is shoving in your face that they're the cream of the crop. I could go to Istanbul and find a kid in a hut who's got a better voice than some people that you know you may see on TV every day. That's a simple way to see it, and I like it just because, like you said, they could just share their own perspectives. But something like that also can only be truly done if you feel like their substance right like to be shared because the song is right. or if like the the opposite not the opposite but a similar version is there's so much substance to this beat right i want to hear everybody on this beat you know like when we do remixes back in like a, a millie right everybody wanted to freestyle to a millie it, it was just hitting in that way and you found the subject version of, of that and like it was real cool to see the, but i didn't know if they were just all like homies or if there was like a marketing play into it or, or, or what brought it about. But I just, it was one of those things that of course it stuck out as an individual song, but then it additionally stuck out when you did the, that uh, the remix and that approach, because it's like, when's the last time I've seen something that had this many people and people right. are listening for the next story. You want to even see what the next person says. You know what I mean? I got one coming for dear alcohol too. Actually. I literally just uh, filmed it uh, this weekend. 12 different people. Well, like, before we get out of here, man, one question. Shakori, I know you wanted to answer this question, but you haven't, so I'm going to ask it so you don't oh, have yeah, to it, waste man. time remembering. Yeah, do your thing, man. Do your thing. <laughs> but <laughs> it was the future p- push, future uh, proofing question. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, Dex, what did you – and I, Jacory, let me know if I'm asking it correctly. But, like, how do you think about future proofing yourself so – like you have longevity future proving myself. So I have longevity. Uh, I think it always goes back to the words. I think it's like, you know, when I think of to be a man, that song is going to be relevant for all of time because there's always, you know, new men born every day, new people turning 18 and you know, every man is a man and every woman knows a man. So I think it's just in the words continuing to make songs that are going to be relatable. that are always going to have, you know, I think I got a bunch of those, the dear gods, the dear alcohol. So just that, I think, yeah. Words. So your your plan to, uh, I like it. The future proofing plan is to make sure that I talk about themes and subjects that stick with people so they still want to talk about it right. and, and relate to and it. And luckily for me, that's just well, what I do. I can't even, I can't even make nonsensical shit. It doesn't even work if I, even if I wanted to, you know, from the poetry to now, things just always full circle and, so yeah and then just obviously just you know staying disciplined um you know there's a lot of things that tempt you in the music industry or whatever that may be and just you know staying on the path i think we all have paths that god has us walking on and where we can just mess them up based off our decisions so you know like i said if that thing if that thing shake you know it's not always you know it's not always the time it's not so yours to take discipline <laughs> you know, staying away not not too much liquor um stuff like that i like that yeah i love that man because to me that just sounds like connecting well yeah like connecting like if i actually make a real connection Mm -hmm. there's nothing greater than that that is the impact and the impact becomes the legacy because people don't just forget about real impact that got made on their life yep right so yeah i just try to simplify everything i got my little my little uh theory i got called simple complexity and that's just how i live my life what did uh oh, you gotta explain that man Leave Simple complexity. Here, man. Um, i've been saying that for years it's like i just everything is everything is like just simple yet you know complex you know it's like okay well what's the simplicity of you know we get in a car but we never get in a car without a destination 
Mm. One was a lot like very listen, you might there's something going on if you're just getting in car and taking drives with no destination to go. You're usually going somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. so th- this, that's such a simple thought. But then if you think of life as a car, why do you why do we live life without goals then? Mm-hmm. Which is why writing goals is so important. And I saw when I was 11 years old, I saw a video when you write goals, you get ahead of like 95% of people. So which is why daily, I just like, even as like, I, I write TikTok posts, Facebook posts, just like, like direction, creating direction. Depression is the feeling of being lost. So how do you find yourself? Well, first of all, you don't want to find yourself. You want to create yourself. But how do you create yourself? You create yourself by creating direction and following that direction every single day, day after day after day after day until habit becomes lifestyle. It's like no one likes, br- when you're a kid, you don't like brushing your teeth. It sort of sucks, but then it gets easy because it just becomes a part of your lifestyle. So what if we started to get things to become a part of our lifestyle, like working out or writing down goals or, and all of a sudden you add all these tools to your lifestyle belt and you're fucking successful, you know? Man, I love that. Simple complexity. 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 So it's like simplifying things to just like so like people ask me like, like, oh, why don't you get a nice car? I'm like, well, to me, the function of it is just to go to point A to B. And so right now, I don't really feel like doing all that. It's like I pretty much wear the same thing every day, you know, unless it's like, you know, I got to dress up for something. Just like simplifying the things that don't need to be complicated. Right. Right. My analogy that kind of like works within your framework, I would say, is um like the same but different everything is the same but different and i would use a a snowflake as an example right all snowflakes are unique but they're all made out of the same elements right yes. like just super simple um so i i don't know man i feel like the things that you say require you to think right and refining everything that you like you know finding these ways of viewing the world or at least refining how you view the world so you understand how you think about it is probably a huge part of your success because one of my favorite things to say is the greatest value in an artist is their point of view like what else is there you know what i'm saying and you have definitely have a point of view but let's let's end it here man dax appreciate having you on man let's see if he catches it i'm brandman sean i'm Corey, and i'm dax there we go. And <laughs> this is no labels necessary. We out. We Peace. out. <laughs> Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is. We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.